something's being done to this little boy and this little boy's family. And can you tell me what you think? Have an update now, the mother of a Darian Murray. She could lose custody. What on earth is going on? I'm going to tell you. Watch this to remind you of the original incident, scary as it is. He said, said everybody come out with your hands up. I, then I came running inside the living room. And then, then I remember I heard the big bang. Then I just remember holding my chest. As he laid in his mother's arms, bleeding out from a gunshot wound, 11-year-old Adarian Murray was so convinced he was going to die, he began to pray to God and sing gospel songs. I think like, like I'm going, going to die. Tell, her, tell my whole family, tell my teacher, I say, I say I'm sorry for, for what I did. Darian's mother says he developed a collapsed lung and suffered fractured ribs and a lacerated liver due to the gunshot wound. He spent days in the ICU at the University of Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson, needing a ventilator to breathe. It came right here. Right here. More than a week since the shooting, he is remarkably in good spirits, but says sometimes when he's alone with his thoughts for too long, he has nightmares. Sometimes. I can see myself laying inside the coffin. I'm all my thoughts at night, my only ones. I sometimes think people are watching me. But my main thought is me dead. If that officer was here, sitting right here across from you, what would you want to tell him, Adarian? Why did you do it? I could have lost, lost my life all because of you. I want you terminated for what you did to me. Another black boy, a child forced to wake up to a reality in America. And I'm so proud of this child, I'll give you the rest of the details. Because here is a child who is speaking to humanity, his vulnerabilities, he has fear. He'll wake up in a coffin. He's thinking of himself in a coffin. He's been shot, ICU, ventilator. Just try not to look at his color if that's what you're about. And just listen to that baby's voice. A baby. You're not a man, and he shouldn't be. And I don't want to hear about bravery. He's a child, cradled in his mother's arms, bleeding out. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. Murray suffered a collapsed lung, fractured ribs, lacerated liver from the shooting, had to be placed on a ventilator, as you heard. And months passed before a grand jury decided in December 2023 not to criminally indict the officer. There he is, Greg Capers. Nothing to see here, no charges. I wonder how they presented to that grand jury. I thought you could indict a ham sandwich, but it seems like a lot of times police aren't. It's strange how that works. Following that decision, the Indianola Board of Aldermen voted to reinstate Capers to his post on the force because, you know, only the best people. Adarian and his family attended the meeting. And as the board voted to reinstate Capers, a surge of emotions overcame the boy and he had to be taken to a nearby hospital for treatment. Look at the baby's face. Look at the emotion. Is that acting? It's real. Had the courage to walk up in there and confront what could have been an executioner. He goes to the hospital. Months later, 
I don't know, how about another punch to the gut? Nicola Murray could lose custody rights to her children nearly a year after an Indianola police officer shot her then 11 year old son. Make it make sense. Well, she's trying to. She's trying to make it make sense. Sunflower County prosecuting attorney Gwendolyn Jimison. This is what she's saying. She cited the shooting while accusing Nicola Murray of neglecting her three children. Jemison filed papers in the Sunflower County Youth Court against Nicola Murray that alleged an unnamed witness saw Murray's ex-boyfriend, John Knowlton, frequently assaulting her in front of the kids. Jesus. <sighs> okay, so I'm hearing about a domestic, allegedly domestic violence survivor. I, I think that's what I'm hearing. The petition says the witness said the shooting of 11 year old Darian Murray was a result of mother and boyfriend domestic violence that have been happening for years. I wish that witness would have come through sooner. She says she said she knows this has been happening for years. What? Only now? You see these people, you see, understand what's going on here? Is it starting to shape up for you? It's starting to shape up for me. Colin Murray's attorney, Carlos Moore, told the Mississippi Free Press to have to even think of losing her kids at this point over something that is not her fault is just unbelievable. Thank you, attorney. Outlandish. The attorney said that the effort to terminate Nicola Murray's custody rights is unfair because the officer <coughs> is who shot her son, not Molden. Nobody had been shot before the cop came in. Those be there to help. The boy wanted help. Where's mom? Moore said, uh, Moore, that Capers apologized last year in a statement through his lawyer saying he did not mean to shoot the child. Thanks. Problem is the ex-boyfriend's not the one who shot the boy, it's the cop. And I'm all for getting to the ex-boyfriend, trust me. But not before we get to the cop. And certainly not jumping in front and pushing mama out there. The hell is going on here? Murray must report to the Sunflower County Youth Court April 17th to defend her right to continue to have custody of her three children. Nolden fathered one of A. Darian Murray's siblings, will also have to appear in court to defend his custody rights. Are they going to put the accused domestic violence perpetrator and the victim in the same courtroom or they sit side by side? I don't think anybody worried about her. Mississippi Free Press contacted Jimison for an interview, but did not receive a response by press time. Bold move, District Attorney Jimison. Why so quiet now? I, Senator, I've said enough. You can tell where I stand on this, but I am disgusted. This child has been through so much trauma, okay? And I've learned a lot about domestic violence victims. I may know one. How dare you? The black woman is never going to be protected. I wish we would just add that into the pledge or something to let's just put the quiet part out loud. A black mother, it's always your fault. It's too bad she's not a white woman. We'd rally around her, wrap our arms around her, find safe haven for her. And her prize of a son? Damn it, sometimes it's your own people. I, I don't like, I just don't like saying that. I don't like saying that. I used to fight with my co anchor over that when he would say, I'd say, God, I wish you wouldn't say that. But I can't unsee what I'm seeing here. And perhaps there's indoctrination and deprogramming uh, that needs to take place in the community here. But I'll okay. give you the floor. You, you're more eloquent than I am. I'm just, my heart is broken. How about that? My heart is broken. Yeah, I can tell. No, we're both eloquent and elegant women. <laughs> uh, I love your commentary, Sharon. Yeah, this is this is hard. This is gut wrenching to re-traumatize this family, re-traumatize this mother. This prosecutor has too much time on her hands. She needs to go after real criminal activity in the communities. 
which I'm sure there's some that she can work on instead of further victimizing this family. So we do understand from the report, Sharon, that you read that the police was called to their house because of alleged domestic Mm -hmm. violence. So this officer was called. Uh, Why he felt the need to shoot first and ask questions later, I am not sure. Uh, We understand that the little boy heard, you know, put your hands up and he came out of his room and the officer automatically shot, you know, just got trigger happy in that way. That definitely has to be dealt with. We already know that he was let off the hook for this. He apologized through his attorney. I think he should have done better than that. We don't know necessarily what was going through the officer's mind, but what we do know is that a 11 year old boy was seriously injured. We know that this little boy will never be the same again. How could a child say they, they imagine themselves in a coffin? They got so much anxiety. And Shane, I don't think that they should have taken that little boy to the courtroom though. I really don't. Now his emotion, a picture is worth a thousand words and they can do what they want to do. They already did it. But if it were me, I would not have taken my son or my daughter to that courtroom. But it is obvious that that little boy is traumatized and that must be dealt with too. But to further victimize this family and your point about black women, it leads me to think about something that Minister Malcolm X said. And I am paraphrasing him, but he laid out that the black woman is the most disrespected and unprotected person walking the face of the earth. He he said that much more eloquently and powerfully than I have, but it is still true. It was true when he said it in the 60s, and it is still true to this day. And then your point about what happens to black mothers and to black children, and particularly black sons. Uh, The great civil rights activist Ella Baker has a quote that is always quoted, but we never, myself included, quote it in its entire context. And she said that we who believe in freedom cannot rest. But before she said those words, she talked about how when black sons matter as much as white sons, when a black mother's pain matters as much as a white mother's pain, then we will know that we have arrived as a nation. Again, paraphrasing her. Those are the comments she made before the second half of that, which is we who believe in freedom cannot rest. This is an example of that that fits. And there's so many other examples that fit that we do have to analyze the legal system in this country and how the, how uh, justice, she not blind. And she see black people all the time. You know, there's a saying in the black community, just us is what justice means. And we got a whole lot of work to do. But Sharon, come on, that prosecutor, there are other things to do. If she really does believe that those children are are in peril. I mean, this mother allegedly has been is being abused. So the the whole household is being abused. If if she really wanted to do something to edify the both the mother and to protect the children, trying to take her children away is not the answer. And this is why I use the word indoctrination. Because apparently, again, everything is a black woman's fault. And even another black woman in power can see that. Black women are loud, promiscuous, strong, and they bring these matters upon themselves. But I'm gonna say this about this child. This is what you're creating, America. Beautiful black boy. I don't know where he can go emotionally, mentally from here. It will take incredible resources to rehabilitate his mind, his emotions, regulate them, his heart. I don't want to mix in other places around the world, but I just had this conversation about another war zone and how actions on one side weren't making it any safer. You're actually making it more dangerous, people who weren't joining that fight. People who lived under certain oppression and dictatorship type behavior still didn't join, still didn't align themselves with terror. Then you started blowing everybody away. Not allowing people to just have basic needs like food. And then what I say is, you're not eradicating anything. You're making everyone less safe, all because you're laser focused on not finding that solution. And it's the same over here with this little boy, Adarian. You are creating, you're dismantling beauty and you are creating a 
horror that America will have to reckon. That's just the way I see it. You're going to have to deal with people whether you like the way they look, the color of their skin or not. You're going to have you want to deal with them one way or the other, America. You're, it's going to be your problem, whether you believe it or not. That's just what I see. Senator, I quickly give you the last word because I I no. shouldn't have gone in another place, but I can't no. I can't help myself in my mind. I'm glad I'm glad to go down Sharon Reed Lane. I like it. It's beautiful down that street. You good? We good? Thank you, Senator.